Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. Uh, today's episode, episode number 987. 13 more days to a thousand. <laughs> Still haven't got an idea what I'm going to talk about then, but I'll find something, I'm sure. Um, but today, by coincidence, happens to be Valentine's Day Eve, as in February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. So my question to you, and the question I'm going to talk about, or we should say the topic I'm going to dive into, is how are you loving, and do you have plans? And the plans are going to be much more, well, we'll see. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, because I don't have a script or a plan or any intention of what I'm going to say. This is the way it works with these talks. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these every day, and I'll give you information at the back end of how you can find the replays, and also saying join me live every day. I'm probably going to drop some links in the comments, that's the way it normally happens, and I'll let you know what they are once I get to them. But I want to start with basically saying... Um, Happy pre-Valentine's Day. Now, this is going to trigger people in different ways. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Courtney. I see you both in my broadcast. Um, for some people, this is the most challenging time of year. Now, let me oh, let me excuse one thing. If today, if February 14th is your wedding anniversary or your birthday, ignore what I'm about to say. <laughs> because I'm speaking to those people mostly who, excuse me, have had challenges around Valentine's Day. Maybe a past relationship was traumatic around Valentine's Day. Maybe you're single right now. And in fact, right now, I'm going to talk to single people. I did a talk yesterday specifically about single stuff, and I want to talk about that again today because so many people are single, and Valentine's Day is the antithesis of being single. I should say being single is the antithesis of being in, in, on Valentine's Day. Something like that. The thing is, is that Valentine's Day is an extremely commercial event. Um, people call it, call it a hallmark holiday for a good reason, which is basically that... Um, this is catching my eye there. Okay is that a lot of people are very caught up in the idea about how you've got to be romantic on Valentine's Day. Now, let, let me start with one thing, <laughs> one of many things. If you're saving up all your romantic gestures for your partner for one day a year, you're doing it wrong. You're doing the relationship wrong. So be blunt, to be simple, to be uh, um, succinct about this. Romance should be a daily practice, not a once a year practice. Clear? Okay. Okay, back on track. So being single on Valentine's Day can feel like a bit of a challenge because everyone seems to be out there in couples. Well, not so true. I've actually been reading some interesting articles the last few days. They've been provoking some thoughts in me and also some things I want to pass along to you, especially if you're single, so you take Valentine's Day as a joyful experience versus a painful experience. As a choice, by the way. Um, first of all, I think in some ways being single is one of the best things to be on Valentine's Day because it's cheaper. <laughs> I think this in, in context. It, apparently from what I've been reading, Valentine's Day is one of the most expensive days of the year to go to restaurants. A lot of restaurants have a prefixed menu that's very structured. Actually, probably, actually, it's probably comparable to maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas Day, maybe. But anyway, on Valentine's Day, a lot of restaurants charge exorbitant fees to, 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 to give you a fixed menu of food that normally costs them about a quarter of what they're charging. If you're single, don't do that. You don't have to. You can walk away. If you're a couple, in fact, if you're a couple, I would suggest more romantic than that is actually to cook at home together. Yes, I know it's clumsy for some people. But if you haven't practiced cooking together, it's about time you started. So having a chance to explore cooking together for dinner as a gesture for romance, romance is a wonderful thing to do. On the same track, if you're single, if you want but you really play up the romance gesture, the romance feeling, why here's an opportunity to either get some food to go or cook for yourself something that you love. Maybe something maybe a favorite food. Maybe your favorite dessert, maybe your favorite course. Cook something wonderful for yourself. And set up a table for one with candles and silverware and everything else and enjoy yourself savoring a meal in your own company. Now, for some people, it's like, that sounds so horrible and lonely and stuff like that. I'll speak to that in a moment. But to do things that are, are of a loving gesture to yourself, for me, is a practice that is recommended for every day of the year. It's a way of life to do this because if you want to be in a relationship and you're not doing that, you're basically, basically risking codependency. I know, just a quick detour there, but let me say that back in another way. If you're in a relationship and all you're focusing on is the love you get from the other person, and you're not spending any energy, any energy, on taking care of yourself, loving yourself, making yourself the most perfect, loving person you can be for yourself, you're entering into a codependent risk. A risk, yes, a codependent's a risk. And the thing about this is that we tend to think, because we've been trained by the culture this way, that when you're in a romantic relationship, it's the other person's job to love you. And then it's also your job to love them. But there's no about loving ourselves. Courtney would say, you, you cook at home together for the last few years, something fun and unique, like crab's legs using fancy china plates. That is awesome, Courtney. I'm glad you, yeah, thank you. That's exactly the point. 
is that you can make it something special for Valentine's Day. Going to restaurants and putting money in their pockets for a meal that costs a quarter of what they're charging, not so much. But if you're single, why not treat yourself as romantically as you would a partner? Yes, I'm saying it intentionally. Romantically as you would a partner on Valentine's Day. Maybe, and I wouldn't say it, avoid the restaurants, but maybe you go see a movie. Take yourself out to the movies on your own. I've been doing that for a long time, being single. I've, always, I've enjoyed going out to see movies on my own because for one thing, I'm going to listen to somebody talking in my ear during the movie. I can enjoy it myself. Okay, let's leave that one alone. There's, there's, a, bit, there's a little bit of complaining going on there, but let me, let me back up. So when, when you go out on Valentine's Day for your, I mean, and you're single, there are a lot of places I've been reading about recently. Apparently there's a lot of places like brew pubs and places like that, which are really fun places because when you go there, most of the people there are single. So actually, it's a good time to go check out who's out there if you want to do that sort of dating um, process. Although I, I have recommendations of another choice about how you go dating instead of doing the bar scene. But what I'm saying is, though, when you go to these um, bar um, bars and restaurant type places, not bars and restaurants, bars and brewery type places, there's lots of times where it's all just singles. Because most couples don't go to brew pubs, they go to restaurants. See? But I think, use your noggin. Think about places that couples don't go to. If they're going to go to the theatre, That'll be a mix of singles and couples. But the thing about it when you're a theater, that the lights are down, you have to worry about them um, distracting you from enjoying the movie. So there's lots of things you can do on Valentine's Day that are self-supportive. Now, I have a, I had, a, um, I had an ebook that I had called Adventures in Romance, which is about 150 different ideas for how to be romantic with another person. Most of those you can do on your own. Most, I'm just double checking, most of those you can do on your own. So that's something, if you want that, I can send it to you as well. It's, a, it's some of it's when you are in a relationship, recommend if you have a, if you are in, in partnership, you have this, this little um, list of things you can do, because it can be fun to play with. But some of the things in there, a lot of things in there, in fact, you can do on your own as well for Valentine's Day. Like, for example, um, take yourself for a picnic. Go out for the daytime, I mean, if you have the chance to go out in the daytime, is, is pack yourself for a picnic. Maybe a sandwich, a nice bottle of Perrier, something like that and go to the beach or to the park and just sit down and enjoy life. Nobody else around. The thing about being single, it's not a detriment or an insult on Valentine's Day, which is why I'm doing this talk. I've been talking about it for the most of the week about the marketing presumption of Valentine's Day making people who are single feel somehow left out. Now, I experienced this myself many years ago, watching people in couples doing things. Nowadays, because I don't watch TV, it doesn't bother me so much. <laughs> But the recognition is that the marketing hype is out there to get people to buy stuff. Now, if you're a couple, as Courtney said, about cooking at home together with something nice, I mean, frankly, if you're doing something like crab's legs, that's not a cheap dish, but it's a lot cheaper than the restaurant's charge. So why not? If you're single, again, cook yourself a nice meal at home. Maybe you go out somewhere where you want to enjoy being on your own in the world. Maybe it's a walk on the beach, or to go to the park, pack a picnic, go for a bike ride. Do things that you can actually enjoy being with yourself. And this weekend, by the way, because since Valentine's Day is a Friday, some people are going to probably plan to have a Valentine's weekend. That's their choice. But you can definitely enjoy your own company, and I've been talking about this quite a while now, about being on your own and enjoying being on your own as a single person. As I recap from the earlier on, when you love yourself first, rather than seek your love outside yourself, you're in a much healthier place, one, to love who you are and to recognize who you are and, and, and honor who you are, and be more attractive for a future relationship. One of the best kept secrets, if it is such a thing, is that the best way to be, the best way, best way to attract a relationship is to not need one. And the way you don't need one is when you love yourself first. Is that making sense? So self-love as a primary practice that I keep talking about, it's why I have the self-love meditation, I'll put a link in the comments, you can check that for yourself. That is a practice that you can do anyway, anywhere, excuse me, to practice loving yourself first. It makes you a much more attractive person to other people, so you can be more um, available for a relationship but also you don't need one because you don't need to be loved by somebody else to feel okay the paradigm we come out of that we've grown out of I hope we're growing out of is that somehow being in a relationship makes us better than being single I disagree now I've been a relationship coach for, ten, for over 10 years I said this in the broadcast yesterday the day before I think somehow I think for a lot of people being single is the healthier place to be because so many people in a relationship are suffering either because they're not getting what they want or because they're being hurt in the relationship, or they're not getting the love they think they need. But when you practice self-love on yourself, when you're single and you own your space, and you honor who you are, then you have more power. Yes, Courtney, yeah, best way to attract a relationship is not to not need one. I didn't know this one for a long time, so I definitely was in a place of desperation, let's just be blunt. <laughs> 
I was definitely seeking love as a need, as a want, as have to get that. And it was really, frankly, um, repulsive to the women I know. I know this because I got feedback. So the recognition for me now is that I, I've learned the lesson I teach my clients the same thing too. If you want to have a healthy relationship, you want to attract a healthy relationship, don't need it. Because this goes back to the codependency thing I've talked about many times. Oh, by the way, um, I'll be, I'm probably going to be next week or week after, a friend of mine is going to be doing a TV interview with me. We're going, to, we're going to do a series on codependency, how to break the cycle, so stay tuned for that. I'm adamant about codependency being a trap. I've watched it happen to so many people. I've been in it myself. I don't do it anymore. At least I believe I don't. <laughs> I've been single for a while, so we'll see what happens when I get into the new relationship. But my point about this is that is is the focus that self love, honoring yourself, respecting yourself, taking care of yourself, all the self invested energy is the healthiest way to live life, is the healthiest way to be in a relationship. It's also the healthiest way to attract a relationship. And the good thing about that is when you love yourself and you take care of yourself, you don't need anybody else to do that for you. So you can actually do it now. Now I do have, as I said, a guided self-love meditation, which I can recommend you buy and you download and use, but you don't even need that. I know I'm shooting myself in the foot for sales, <laughs> but the thing is you can do things for yourself. It doesn't, have to, doesn't necessarily have to be like a commitment to go to the gym or the yoga class five days a week, although that's a good thing to do. It could simply be that you make sure you get six, seven, eight hours of sleep minimum. Maybe it's that you practice gratitude, which I do every day as well. I give gratitude jar to keep track of those things. Not to, well, excuse me, not to keep track, but to remind myself that what's good is, is worth enjoying. There are so many things you can do that take care of yourself to appreciate and love yourself. It could be just dressing up nice each day, even if you're not going out is to look in the mirror and like, I like what I see. Now, all I'm talking about here with self-love is nothing to do with egotism or selfishness or any of those sort of things. That's a different point of view. That's actual all mental ego stuff. I'm talking about embracing and embodying the whole thing yourself. To love and, and appreciate who you are, to respect who you are because you deserve that. If you don't give it to yourself, you're not gonna be able to accept it from somebody else very well either. Because if you don't love yourself first, you tend not to like who you are, which is really frustrating. So loving yourself is a key to actually enjoying being you. Again, the more you do that, the more attractive you become to other people. So the more likely you might be asked to go on a date. Now, I guess you could say, if you don't want to go on a date, don't do this. <laughs> but I would say, no, do it anyway. Just because somebody asks you doesn't mean you have to say yes, by the way. But it does require you taking care of yourself. I'm, I'm a, to make sure I circle that one around because there's lots of pieces I'm giving you here. So again, the reminder is that Valentine's Day for a single person, I think is a good day. I was actually sort of somebody, I was posting somebody's wall about this comment earlier today about what do you think of Valentine's Day? I said, it's a great day to celebrate being single. Because <laughs> I believe it is. Because being single is a healthy choice. Yes, being in a relationship is too. But if you don't know how to love yourself single, if you don't know how to respect yourself single, you may be missing on how fully you can embrace a healthy relationship. So start with the one in front of the mirror. Start with the relationship with you so you can actually learn one, how loving yourself feels, and two, how taking care of yourself is a positive experience. It'll give you a chance to um, explore how amazing you really are. And I believe you are. Yes, even though I don't know half the people watching this, I believe you are an amazing person, but do you know that? So your focus, your assignment if you choose, <laughs> Mr. Phelps, the Mission Impossible reminder, is for the next at least for tomorrow and through the weekend, since that's the Valentine's weekend, is take time to look in the mirror, look in your own eyes and say, I love you. To say to yourself that you love yourself. Now, I recommend my self-love meditation if you want to use that. It's a powerful guided meditation with a guidebook that'll take you to a couple of deep levels you may not have expected. I'm not going to tell you what those are. You have, to get the, you have to get it to find out. But the thing is going to be simple is that when you do that, you'll find yourself going through the weekend with much more grace and ease. If you notice yourself getting triggered because of the Valentine's hype or because you see couples out there, just put your hand over your heart and remember that you love yourself. Put your hand over your heart and tell yourself you love yourself. That'll help you remember. So you can spend the weekend in love and enjoy it rather than jealousy and envy. But of course, it's all your choice. Just think of anything else I want to say on that. I think that's about it. I will do a Valentine's Day Facebook Live tomorrow, of course, because I do one every day. I'll tell you about that in a moment. So I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about yet. Maybe it'd be more of the same. Maybe it's something different. We'll see. Um, I did post replays, by the way, from last year and the year before since I got Facebook memories. And it's interesting that both talks I did a year ago today and two years ago today 
We're about surviving Valentine's Day. <laughs> so this talk today is about thriving Valentine's Day, just to be a different spin. Well, if you want to watch those, I did repost them on my wall. Um, so again, I'll put the link in the comments for my self-love guided meditation because that will help you really own, honor, and love who you are. And if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. This is, as I said, episode number 985, 987, excuse me. Um, coming down coming down the final stretch to bring, hit my thousandth broadcast. Yes, that's going to be in a couple of weeks. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can join me seven days a week right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, uh, usually about 5 p.m. Pacific times when I go live. If you haven't seen my broadcast before and you want to see the replays, I keep them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can like my page and find them there, although Facebook is not good at keeping everything on show, meaning there's only about two or 300 visible there of my 900 plus. So if you want to watch all my broadcasts, or at least search for all my broadcasts to find the ones that speak to you personally, go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, easy to find. Subscribe to my channel, and on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where you find every single one of the broadcasts from newest to oldest, and this one will be up there shortly. My talks are here to inspire you, to support you, and help you love yourself more and have amazing relationships. That's a compendium of resources you can go through for free. If you want to go deeper, reach out to me on social media. I'm here to help you, and you can message me as well. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in, in below, and I'll respond when I sign off. I invite you, as always, to love yourself first before any relationship. And as I say in all my broadcasts, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.